Hi, everyone. Oh, hi. 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 <laughs> Welcome to Great Area Foundation for the Arts uh, for the Urban Data Challenge Pack Day. You guys excited to be here? Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is uh, Open Data Day. So happy Open Data Day. Um, make sure you wish that to all of your neighbors as well. And uh, basically we're here to explore some uh, exciting data sets that we have from San Francisco, Geneva, and Zurich as kind of a cross-country collaboration. Um, we've, we've spent the last few months working with the cities and standardizing all this data so that you guys can play with it. And over the next month um, or so, we'll be having uh, submissions accepted to the, to the challenge. And, um, yeah, it's really exciting. These guys will tell you more about it. Um, but basically, the idea is to share data across cities and, and figure out what they can learn from each other. So, um, if you've ridden um, Muni here, or if you've ridden transportation in Geneva or Zurich, which I just had the opportunity to do, which is pretty cool, um, you know, there's differences in the systems, there's differences in the speeds that you get around, um, there's expectations are different, the management of the, of the lines is different, there's a lot of um, similarities in problems that people do with, but also differences across um, each country and how they manage transportation. So it's interesting to see when you get behind the scenes how, how things are moving. Um, so uh, Gray Area has uh, uh, been here since 2008 when we were founded. It's a kind of place where art meets technology and, and design and um, applies those tools to, uh, to a broader social purpose. And um, we're really excited to host you guys here today. So let me know if you have any questions and visit gapta.org to find out. And I'll turn it over to you. Yeah. First, say a few things about the data sets and I'll play this business first. Oh, yeah. So I'm Ian, um, one of the co organizers of the D3JS user group here in the Bay. I'm excited to see so many people out here. Um, and if anyone wants to learn more about D3 or use it for your project, we'll be hosting a couple of workshops. Uh, this morning, this afternoon, and um, we'll also be doing stuff with the data sets, um, like exploring them. So if you haven't really taken a deep look yet, or you're curious about that, um, we'll try to help you out with that too. So it should be fun. And uh, I'm Yohan from uh, Swiss Link San Francisco. We're also one of the co-organizers of, uh, of this, uh, this challenge. I'm really happy to see you all here today. So I'll go more into the practical uh, information as uh, they will be running uh, the day today. Uh, so I'll be sitting over there on the, the, the red couches under, under the meet um, um, sign. So if you don't have a team or if you're looking for team members, you can come to me. I'll do an Excel sheet and put names in there. And so we can match all of you together if you're looking for more people. Uh, as you have seen, we have food over there at 1.30 p.m. We're going to get pizza as well. So feel free to uh, feed yourself well and, uh, and also uh, get some drinks. Uh, and apart from this, well, we're going to uh, go now with uh, Chris Fengon to um, do a quick Q&A. Uh, he's from SFMTA, as most of you know probably. And um, so we're going to do the Q&A live with uh, Zurich over there. Uh, get some questions from them, uh, from them, get some questions from you. And, uh, and then, well, once we're all done with that, we can start uh, doing the actual hackathon. So again, yeah, same thing. If you have questions, don't hesitate to come to me and uh, ask. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, we'll we'll see if they're, they're ready in Zurich. Uh, maybe the, the, well, maybe we can maybe take a few questions from from you guys already for uh, for Chris. Um, if you have on the data or on you know whatever you want to ask him um, from the data from SMT, well, we connect with them. Yeah, Chris, maybe you can talk about your, your bot, like just quick intro also. Sure. Um, yeah, maybe I'll introduce myself really quick. Uh, my name is Chris Pangolina, and uh, I'm a transportation engineer and a planner at the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency, the SFMTA. And so we run uh, buses, trains, as well as we do the traffic signal lights and uh, the striping, the painting on the roadway, and parking and taxis as well. And uh, so we do almost all of transportation in the city of San Francisco. Um, the data that we shared uh, is a week of data in the beginning of October of last year, 2012, and it's what we call AVL and APC, Automatic Vehicle Location and Automatic Passenger Counter kind of Data. Our Automatic Vehicle Location data is our GPS system that covers our entire fleet, 100% coverage, gives you latitude, longitude, and reports about 90 seconds. Our Automatic Passenger Counter kind of data is 30% of our bus fleet, no rail, unfortunately. And that counts uh, people going on and off the buses and gives you loads, um, passenger loads at stops. 
Um, that data is really good in that it, it, it locates at bus stops. It's very uh, accurate um, and, and at important points along the route. Whereas the GPS data is all over the place, which is great to, for you know, it's raw data, but it also requires a little more massaging to get to what you want to do in terms of uh, visualization and um, analysis. Question about that is, yeah. it, is it available uh, to the public on a anything any like a real time or yeah. real time basis? It is. The, uh, it's called Next Bus, the one that you see at the shelters, which tell you the next bus arrival. That we have a real time feed on our website. Um, a lot of apps have been created off of that feed, um, but that can be used. Sorry, I think you had a question. Yeah, this my own. My question was, I just showed off, and I know there were, there were a couple other people that just came. Could you give me a pointer to where where on the web it is, or what? Where should I look to get started? Do you want to show them? So it's actually urban data challenge that work redirects to this post. And then the data itself. Hi. I think you just passed it. I passed it. Step two. <laughs> so uh, um, I would invite you to come down. Okay. So, hello, San Francisco. I'm sorry for uh, small delays. You know, the Swiss are always late. So. Um, It's really, really something groundbreaking happening here in this challenge, and it's it's hard to say. It's not that San Francisco is participating, but it's that the two cities of Switzerland are participating. Because you 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 can imagine. I mean, you know this from the states as well. There is a lot of uh, like there's not so much collaboration in between the cities. So it is really great for us to experience that San Francisco actually is bringing two Swiss cities together. So one question now um, that we have, um, and that we also ask the guys from the Zurich Transportation Department and from the Geneva one is a question to, to Chris. Why is he participating, or why is this institution participating in this challenge, um, what does he think? Does it bring, or maybe it does not really has to bring something? That's something that the guys here are wanting to or wanting to know. Yeah. So uh, hey, I'm Chris from the San Francisco MTA, and uh, I think you were asking. Uh, hey. <laughs> I think you were asking uh, why are we doing this and. Uh, I think the big reason why we're doing this is that we have a lot of data sitting in our agency. Um, you've only got one small slice of it. We have lots and lots of data with our bus and trains. And we just don't really have the staff or the time, uh, unfortunately, to really delve into this. Um, and I think we should spend more time on it. But I think that by participating in this kind of an event, uh, we're looking for inspiration from you guys in uh, Switzerland as well as here in San Francisco and anywhere else in the world to really show us what we can do with this data and to tell us, uh, wow, this data is telling you a lot of stuff about your system. 
It's telling you why you're unreliable or why it's not on time, why you don't have enough buses running throughout the city, uh, maybe how beautiful it really is during the day with all those buses zipping around the city. Um, and we're just looking to, to really see what the power of this data is. And I think that by looking at the submissions um, that come out of this uh, event here um, in both countries, um, it will really inspire our leadership and our staff to, to spend more time with this data and, and make it part of our, our, our work. Um, is it the first time that you are participating in an initiative like this? So are you already like, have you ever experienced this kind of openness? Um, with multiple cities, this is the first time. We, we have never done something with two different cities, let alone in a different country before. Um, our experience with the data, we've done a couple other um, hackathons. Um, Hattery San Francisco, Hattery SF did a couple of hackathons last year. Um, the California, I'm going to mess up the name, but the, the College for the Arts, I think it is, also had an event last, I think exactly a year ago. Um, and so those have been really good. And so it's been very nice to see what those hackathons and those events have produced. But this is the first like multi-month, multi multi-city event that we've done before. Cool. So I want to ask uh, in the, into the round here, Zuri, does anyone have a question uh, for Chris? Could you could you step forward and maybe <laughs> forward? Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, oh, the mic. Alright. <laughs> Last news to it's sorry. <laughs> Anyone can you understand the uh, question? Okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm aware of uh, what the situation is in, in your city. Um, all people can benefit from the transparency if there is a, one as such for a public administration. And uh, meaning that if this law, we have such a law to do, and uh, this allows us to get access to this officially, and we just don't have the infrastructure ready to disclose this information and um, sanitize, you know, to respect privacy. We just need uh, some, uh, some meaningful political um, rules on the, the, the skills that come up with it, and then the use we make out of it is uh, it's just a bad thing because it's going to allow us to do the convention. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll be more aware, right? So the question is uh, basically, uh, uh, is, there, is, there, is there a transparency law in San Francisco? Um, uh, that, I mean, what you're doing now is some kind of a data dump. And uh, but what if you would open up data in real time? Are you entitled to do this in San Francisco? Or is there some law missing that is allowing you to do it? Yeah, so there really isn't much of a legal structure around what we're doing here. Um, we're, it's, it's, actually, it's actually really exciting because we're sort of pushing the boundary here of what is going on. This is really new territory for a lot of agencies. The federal government in the United States just had an open, open government uh, law when uh, President Obama took office in his first term. And really what we do here and what everything that happened is really setting the precedent of what happens in the future. Um, there, we do have a sunshine law in, in San Francisco, which means that any citizen can request data um, and, we do, and we have to hand it over in, within 48 hours or something like that. Um, but I think I'd rather see us move towards a, a, a culture and, a, and an environment where we like to provide data and, we, and I think with there's a question over here earlier about Nextbus data. That, that's already available on our website now. Um, and I think the more we put it out there and the more we can help provide some context around the data, the better it is. Um, there, there are some fears, though, um, and it's kind of understandable that the da data without context is very dangerous in that we don't want the wrong conclusions being drawn or the wrong analysis being drawn. But I, I'm kind of more leaning towards that. It's great to have it out there and just see what happens. And, uh, and Whatever happens, happens, and it will go from there, I guess. <laughs> I think that is really, I think some kind of uh, a statement that we would like to hear more in Switzerland. 
mean to just do it and then see what happens. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, because uh, that's really, I think that, that's one difference uh, that you are experiencing, I guess. If you see what you guys are doing up there and what we are doing, we maybe not the fastest here, but when we do something, maybe it's then more sustainable, I don't know. So there is also like an upside, downside, you see. Um, so uh, is there someone else with a question? Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is Marco. Can you hear me? Yep, I hear you. <laughs> I got a technical question. Uh, I would like to know which uh, data source you're using for the map data. Are you using OpenStreetMap data or which kind of data are you using for that? Uh, for the map for data? Hey, yeah, so for uh, our map data, which I think we just released on top of the uh, location data, um, that's all done in our, uh, in our GIS software, uh, ArcGIS. Um, I don't think there's anything other than just the just, just the regular GIS data that we're using, and then we just ex we just exported the uh, shape files, which have our bus stop locations and our routes. Okay, um, but you got no information about building a height or something like that. For only who? For building heights. Oh, building heights. Um, not not only with our, our agency, but um, I think someone just posted recently on the Google Groups a website which has all of the city's data that's open. Not just the transportation data, but also land use, crime, uh, anything else that's posted. Um, so if you're looking at, if you're on the Google Groups site, check that out. Um, I can when I get back today, I can promote that post. So it's uh, a little more visible. Yeah. Do you do you guys have maybe a question to us? Does does anybody have a question for people in Zurich? Not at the moment, Um Okay, so um, I think for a moment then it's just, uh, it's great to have you here, to, uh, um, that you're participating in, in this, and as I said, it's really some groundbreaking things for us, uh, that uh, made it happen, and we're just curious what comes out, and uh, so thank you very much, and happy hacking! <laughs> That's, that's, that's got some personal attributes there and can identify and track people and things like that. Uh, uh, but I wonder if the city has any way of getting anonymized clipper card data so that we, we can actually find out where people are going from and therefore we can determine how effectively people are using the transit system. Yeah, the, the clipper card data is a very rich source of data, I agree. Um, we actually don't own the data. The, the, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, which is another um, regional government body, they're the ones that own that data. Um, so we've been exploring our own way to try to find out if we can get it even from our own use too. Uh, so far we haven't done it yet. Uh, we haven't figured out a way to get an agreement to have that data. Um, but I, I can see if we can explore doing that over the next few weeks. But also, feel free to do it also on your own with the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Um, so, so they would be open to a, a freedom of information request? Um, I don't know how they operate, but I think that would be under the under the law, though. So yeah, um, I don't know what the privacy or how they screen that all out and what their arguments might be, but I haven't I haven't approached them yet on that. Kind of a related question in a way. I would I, I'm starting to form an idea of trip about trip planning. I know there's already. Uh, applications online that you can do strip planning, but I'm interested in the question of, because there's so many different transportation agencies and, and ways to, I, I'm, my question is, how easy is it to coordinate trips across agencies or across uh, you know, transport, 
channels and stuff. Yeah. And, and gathering, I wonder if there's a way to gather data between two organizations to see what those gaps are and get, get data like that. Yeah, so 511.org, that is the website where you can do Bay Area transportation planning as a, as a customer. So if I want to go from here to San Jose, I can put in the two addresses and they'll show me three different transit agencies I have to go through. Um, so that's a great resource. I don't know what their data underlying it is or how open that data is, but they, they have all of our Bay Area Transit Agency's plan data, I mean, uh, service data, and they can plan your route for you. Um, in terms of coordination in real time, whether or not we can sync up our services, some, sometimes we do with Caltrain and our express buses, we sync our bus pulsing from the Caltrain station. Um, uh, same with uh, some of the stuff with the ferry and Transbay Terminal. But it's not 100% uh, integrated, though. The idea is that if you run frequent enough, you don't have to synchronize them. But if they aren't that frequent, then you should look into ways that you can synchronize them. I recently spent five hours traveling from South Peninsula to Marin. Uh-huh. <coughs> All the way up in public Quite a bit longer than I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does that, SSMTA have uh, historical data on auto traffic? We do. Um, so we have, the, it's not as comprehensive, um, kind of ironically, as our transit data. It, it goes back to about, well, really 1950s, but electronically to about 2003. And it's not everywhere, though. It, it's done sporadically by counts. So if we need uh, what we call counts at an intersection, we'll have one of our staffers go out there for a couple days and count traffic, and that's recorded. Um, and that might be the last time it's ever recorded until maybe 2007 or 2011. So it's kind of spotty. Um, it, it is out there though, I think. Uh, the Urban Data Challenge didn't uh, use that data because it was difficult to uh, harmonize our data with Zurich and, and, and Geneva. But it is available though. Okay. If there's a specific road or specific uh, area that you need data, you can, um, you can email me, put it on the Google Group. Yeah, I mean, did you guys have any stuff on like the changes to Market Street, you know, auto traffic like two years ago or whatever. Yeah, I think we have counts on that and travel time on our, on our transit uh, system too. Okay. When they did the, the four strike terms, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes. Do you also use data for future planning about new areas of the block in the Bay Area? Yeah, absolutely. Um, all new buildings or new like big developments, for example, Mission Bay Hospital, um, the new apartment building that's going up on 11th and Market, those all, uh, we all use forecasting models on that to see how much traffic and transit that will generate and make sure that our existing system can handle it. Um, so all that stuff, and we also use existing counts to forecast it and forecast how much traffic will grow uh, based on new developments. So each individual development has that part of it. But that, that's not, that data is not open? No, it, it's not, it's, it's not really organized as I would like it to be either, or as any of us would like it to be. Uh -huh. um, a lot of it is done in PDF uh, environmental impact reports. Um, the Excel spreadsheets tend to stay within the consulting firms that, that made the report. Um, and usually only by request from us do we ever get those. Um, it's, it's not common though. Um, that's another thing I would love to see five years from now is a, a database that's centralized where any time a traffic count happens, it's updated and you see it. But that doesn't exist today, though. Yeah, uh, Bradley, can you tell us anything about uh, the types of methods you would use to do the forecasting? Sure. So we have what we call a activity-based travel model. And that is not our agency, but it's our sister agency, the Transportation Authority. They maintain that. What it does, though, is it takes the existing traffic data and existing land use, demographics, income, job distribution, all that, and through lots of research over the last 30, 40 years, it's, predict it's somewhat predictable what people will travel and how long they will travel to, based on traffic conditions, how long it takes to get there, the cost of travel, um, what job they're working at. And so we build the system in San Francisco and calibrate it to the existing conditions that we know a lot of people obviously work in the financial district and they come along far and so on. And then we can change things, like what if the jobs in the downtown area grew by 10%? How will that impact traffic? Um, what if the East Bay all of a sudden exploded in, in residential growth? Um, how will that impact traffic on BART and the ferries? Based on the demographics that 
um, end up moving to the East Bay and the jobs that end up coming to San Francisco or vice versa? Um, what if we uh, built a second tube of bars? What if Muni got 10% faster and 15% more reliable? All these things factor into the model and predict growth. What, what bearing does private transportation have in your calculation? Is it relatively invisible or you don't have access to it? There's been some recent stories about how Google has its own private transportation agency and they run all these buses up here. It's actually, there's some questions as to whether it's affecting property values and how it's affecting property values. So they have routes which they kind of, it's not exactly a secret, but they, they want you know, they don't want to keep it low key because there, there actually may be potential, I guess, policy or reg regulatory um, considerations. What, is there any kind of interfacing with private agencies? Yeah, we're just starting to roll that into our, our modeling now. It, it's at the very beginning though. So right now it's kind of invisible. But like you're right though, I mean, I'm sure some of you guys here work in tech companies in, in the peninsula and if you live near a shuttle stop, that, that rent will be higher around that shuttle stop because uh, it, it's close, obviously closer way to get to work. Um, that's not modeled right now. Those effects on traffic aren't really modeled right now, just because we just don't know where they're running as, as, uh, in a detailed enough way that we can model it. Um, but we are really, uh, with the city, with City Hall and the SPMCA, we're partnering with a lot of these companies to figure out what their shuttle uh, routes are, where they're picking up, um, so we can better incorporate them. And also, not just them, but also Uber, Lyft, uh, taxis, all that stuff really affects um, uh, just like the private shuttles do too. It's only it's only as secret as a giant bus drive fleet of buses driving her down Guerrero at eight o'clock in the morning. Well, but they're, never... they're white; they have no markings. <laughs> oh, you can tell who's is who's easily. <laughs> Two questions, though. What is what is your? I'm just curious. What is your technical infrastructure? How do you capture the data? And secondly, yeah. are you guys in any way capturing this Twitter feed? Getting the sentiment analysis because I think that could be a very good pointer to where the problem is, what you're yeah. talking about. Um, so, on your first question, uh, I'll get to your Twitter question in a second, but the first question how we capture the data. Right. On 30% of our buses, if you look at the front windshield, if it's in the lower left corner, it'll say ATC on it. That bus is equipped with uh, lasers that cut across the door, and it's, it's a set of two lasers. If you walk in, you cut the first laser, then the second laser. You walk out, it's 2 1. And so it can capture it, uh, people going in and out of all the doors of the buses. Right. And that gets dumped when they come back to the garage. It's, it comes in wirelessly um, in the garage into our database. Right. Um, the GPS data is uh, both that passenger counter system and 100% of our fleet has GPS installed. And that pings every 90 seconds into a real-time feed. But for our purposes, we, we, get, we can download the data every night if we need to. Um, so with the Twitter question, we aren't right now tapping into the sentiment. Um, we have, some of our projects have our own Twitter uh, accounts, right. and we, can, we have some followers and we can interact with people who ride our buses, but not on a global scale where we can look up 5 Fulton and see like, oh man, everyone's really upset at 20th Avenue because something's going on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, that's been brought up at every hackathon though, which I think mm -hmm. means something. That, that's, there's, a, there's a trend there that we should look into. Right. It's like crowdsourcing, right? So you're literally your troubles are basically shared by all of us who are traveling on the system. And I would contribute by, I can tweet, I can say, oh, I'm pissed off, or I'm not here. Exactly. Stop, or there's something wrong in the road, and your system could take advantage. Yeah, and I think it'd be cool if we had an official hashtag or something, you know, to do that. Um, I know in DC they've got an unofficial official hashtag for that. On some DC Metro's got something going on there. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I think that's a good idea. It'd be cool to have that going on here. Thanks. Are you guys able to match up the APC with the clipper card and, and fare readings and figure out what bus lines routinely have the most free riders? So, yeah, are we, like, are we matching our automatic passenger counter data with clipper and yeah, like out. in order to figure out, because like you guys have the transit police that come on and yep. issue citations, but they have to, you know, it's like an optimal lot of problem where they have to decide, okay, today we're going to go on the 9, yeah. tomorrow we're going to be right at the market era station. So we haven't done that yet, actually. The way that we know our fare evasion is through manual um, surveys in the summer when all our interns come in. That's one of the first projects they get, to, to, to survive with our, our finance people on the buses. So we've done a couple updates. Um, summer last year and summer 2010. Um, 
where we will literally swarm the buses with employees or interns and then just and check how everyone got on the bus. And then write down the people that ran off the bus when we got on as people in the day. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the data. We just haven't attacked the data like you exactly said. Um, I think that sounds good. I think a methodology could be developed, though, to, to do that. Yeah. Um, maybe if there's no more questions, uh, Chris, can you hang out for another 15 minutes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can hang out here until noon or a little after if you guys want to talk individually. Or so yeah, so I think we're gonna stay here with Chris, and so if you have questions, you can come individually to uh, ask them. Otherwise, uh, well, have fun uh, hacking and coding, and uh, don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. Thank yeah, you thanks much. guys for doing this. This is great. I'm really excited about it. And thank you very much, Chris, for being here on a Saturday. So that's really cool. Thank you. I thought it was really inspirational to see so many people interested in the data. Um, it was really cool to see Zurich on the Skype. Um, it's fantastic. So many people, some you know, so many time zones away, can be participating, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the results. And um, I guess really, it's just inspiring to see everyone involved. That's what I take away. I've seen a co cool apps on iPad even, or on their uh, laptops, and they're really diving into this data and making some good use of it. Um, already answering some policy questions and operations questions I had uh, from a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. at Swissnext, and I think people are in the right direction. Um, and of course, it's really artistic too, which is great. So it's, it's beautiful visualizations, and uh, they're really attacking the data, which is fantastic.